Don't tell me you've never learned anything on this channel, okay? <laughs> Hello, welcome back to my channel, Knits by Mandy. I'm Amanda and I'm so excited you're here and I'm excited to film this video. I just finished my evening walk and then set everything up right away to catch the last of the evening sunlight. It's like spring, it's so nice. I'm excited about spring knits and I got yarn to show you all. So, whew, <laughs> this is just gonna be kind of like a knitting vlog, studio vlog, yarn mail, swatching. We're just doing bits and bobs. Maybe we call it a bits and bobs vlog. I don't know. Um, but I'm just going to be doing kind of some like knitting chores. Not really chores, but you know what I mean. You have to do like your little tasks to get everything in order. So in this video today, I do need to, I think it, it's going to take place over a few days. I need to wash some sweaters, I think, for the season. So definitely this one that I have here, my very v-neck raglan. It did not pass the sniff test. And I've worn this, I think this has been my most worn piece of the winter fall. I definitely need to wash this one before um, I kind of don't wear it for the spring and summer which the spring and summer are long here in dc so it'll probably stay warm until late september october uh early october and then the next thing that i want to do is i'm so excited i finished one sleeve of my anchor sweater let me fold this down so you can see and i'm so happy with how this is turning out um i have the one sleeve finished and i tried this on and I need to knit another one that's just a t-shirt because I think I'll actually get a lot of wear out of it. And I'm absolutely really loving how the Merino from Knitting for Olive feels and they just, I love their colors. So I might have to knit one of these for the summer or the spring at least. It's a little, maybe just a, a skosh heavy for the summer, but nice to have on for work calls and things like that. So I'm really excited about this. I definitely want to get some rows in. So right now it's Monday. I'm going home to Pittsburgh, um, where I'm originally from, on Thursday evening. So I kind of want to finish this sweater. So I can only, I only technically can, could bring one whip with me. I guess it doesn't really matter because I think I'd bring this anyway to wear. But yes. So speaking of next whip, as we blow through the tasks that I'd like to get done. I have I have two acquisitions. I'm excited because these yarn acquisitions are on the opposite end of the price spectrum. We have a very inexpensive yarn and a really expensive yarn and I'm excited to work with both of them honestly pretty equally and I think it's just a good thing to showcase. Um, so the first, I'll start with the expensive one, is that I got this La Bien Ami I think it's called the Merino Singles yarn from my local yarn store. I had a gift card for my birthday. Um, in all honesty, I don't know if I would spend this much money on fingering rate yarn otherwise, but I got two Hanks um, and I think I want to design my own t-shirt. So I definitely have to um, wind this up and knit a gauge swatch. So that's what I'll be doing in this video. Um, at least to start and I just want to see what it looks like knit up and I have like a very clear idea of what I want the item to look like I want to make a top-down t-shirt with it's not I could just do the anchors tee and hold this double but I don't know if the coloring will lend well to holding double I kind of just want the yarn to speak for itself so I'm picturing like a very wide ribbed collar and then like a very pronounced raglan stitch. It's a very simple design but I still want to try to do it myself because I've never kind of improvised a raglan before. I think that'll involve a little more math to kind of figure out when to do and how many increases. When to do the increases and how many to do of them. So that is on the least 
And if I don't get pretty footage of me winding this yarn, I might just end up showing you the gauge swatch. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see how this turns up. And the colorway is in rose quartz. So now moving on to the opposite end of the spectrum to acrylic yarn. I actually have a sweet story. So um, let me find, let me tell you the story first. So I have a great aunt and I know I have my Pittsburgh accent. So when I say aunt, I mean my mom's mom's sister, like not the bug. I know some people pronounce it aunt. I've confused people that way, but I have a great aunt and she's lived in the same home all of her life mostly all of her life. And this has been the home that she grew up in. It was the home my grandmother grew up in. And it's the home my mother also grew up in. And um, my grandmother has since passed. She passed in 2017. So she and my great aunt lived together. They were very close. And so she's been living in this house since then alone. And it's kind of coming time. It is coming time for her to move out into a more accessible place. So she lives in a, a row house. In, in Pittsburgh and if you've ever been in a row house you know that they're not the most accessible places for older folks or just people that have trouble getting around so I decided I had a few glasses of wine one night and my boyfriend and I were watching the dropout and I was like I'm gonna go yarn shopping so I went yarn shopping online on Joann's and I decided I want to make my aunt a housewarming gift for her new place because this is a huge step for her as you could imagine living in the same place your entire life so i decided i'm gonna try to crochet a blanket for her which seems kind of um what's the word i'm looking for not advantage adventurous there's another one that's like less adventurous more dumb but that word is escaping me so it might be kind of dumb but i'm hopeful so let me i have a gauge swatch but i guess i'll show you my yarns first so ordered from joanne i was gonna unbox the, the whole i was gonna unbox the whole box of this yarn in front of y'all but it had my apartment number written all over it so rule number one of internet safety don't show your address on the internet kids so <laughs> i have a lot of things in my hand i'm gonna show you the yarn first so her favorite color is purple and I also love the color purple so I thought why not and I was really just excited to be looking at acrylic yarn. I don't really use acrylic yarn um, for a lot of reasons. Most of it is like it's I don't like how it feels and then yeah I just don't like how it feels for garments. I think if I start making more like homeware I'll definitely use it more. Um, but as far as like what I'm kind of looking to use, it's not like the first thing I'm grabbing for. I once last year made a crochet top crop top out of acrylic yarn and try wearing that in 90 degree weather and like 80% humidity. Actually, please don't try that. It's a bad idea. So, um, this is all Red Heart Super Saver and it was on sale. So we love Joann's, always having a sale. And I wanted to like start it, base my color palette off of kind of a more, I guess this is self-striping or a more like tonal yarn, not tonal. You know what I mean? It has a lot of different colors. So it has these um, lavender and darker purples with kind of a beige and pink in it. So I thought, you know, that's a lot to work with. So off of that, I thought I'd throw in a neutral. So I got just this oatmeal color pretty pretty basic it almost kind of matches my couch not that it's going here but good to know if I have extra and then I think this is my favorite color um if you have watched my other videos that probably won't be a surprise this is pale plum also very pretty and okay the last color I'm not crazy about because if you hold it up to this one it doesn't really match exactly uh, I think it'll look fine once it's all in the blanket together, uh, but you know, they're not really the same shade or the same tone, you know? I feel like the other two are pretty good matches and this is kind of like Barney purple, but I think my aunt likes this color purple, so <laughs> it's fine. And 
I looked at a few patterns. At first I thought I wanted to do a, um, like a grain square pattern where you just like start with one little square and you keep making them bigger and you try to hook. Um, but I decided against that and I think what I'm gonna do is make a ripple blanket. And so this is one ripple. Um, and basically you just, I'm gonna follow, I think at the Teal Yarn Crafts, she has a um, YouTube video and she has a pattern online. So I'm gonna follow that uh, pattern. It's pretty like simple and basic. And yeah, this is my crochet. It's not the best crochet in the world, but it's a lot better than that crochet crop top I made. Um, and I definitely didn't want to have to seam things together. Um, so yeah. So this is what it looks like. Um, I'm gonna have to think a little bit about the coloring. I didn't realize that this um, ball is much smaller than these bigger ones, but I honestly ordered two of everything which I think is probably egregious. I don't think I needed to order that much yarn, but I did. And it, yeah, maybe not the most savvy buying on my part, but that's what happens when you drink and order wine. So with that, that's kind of a really long intro, but not really, but kind of yes. So basically I think the rest of the video, I'm going to be doing things, filming them, and interspersing them with check-ins. So that's kind of how a vlog works. I just described to you all what a vlog is. Don't tell me you've never learned anything on this channel, okay? So <laughs> with that, yeah, let's just get into the fun stuff. out the last of the sunlight today um and this is what I got so far I mean this is it this is all that I have um 800 yards I was just thinking the whole time wow this is eight football fields worth of yarn and here they are in my hand so yeah we'll see I'm gonna swatch it up and I'll show you all next winding yarn is so relaxing like, I get why people just buy yarn, just to have it and to cake it, and to look at it. But I have other things I need to spend my money on. Wow. Okay, so we are, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're very up close and personal because we're very cozy um, on my couch. But I'm just finishing the sleeve watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, thought we could just like chat for a moment because this is a knitting vlog. <sighs> In case you were not aware. <laughs> anyway, I'm watching the last season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and it's so weird to watch because it happens in, I think like October, 2020. It happens during the 2020 election. So it's just like a trip. Like that seems so long ago um fun fact I actually started dating my boyfriend like we went on our first date um it was right before Halloween so like a week before the election and so like on our second date we went to a bar and we're watching CNN because that's what people do in DC uh but yeah we didn't get results that night I mean it was a it was a whole week until we got it was Saturday but yeah, um, just that feels like so long ago and then we weren't even vaccinated then. And you know, it's just like Alexandra Garn was talking about this in her like her latest like rant video about how like all of this happened, but I feel like none of us really talk about what it means to have lived 
through two years of pandemic. And so sometimes I really do just kind of catch myself and not catch myself as in like, that's bad, but I find myself kind of just like pondering and, and kind of going back to that time because it seems almost so far away, but I don't know. It's, I don't really have that many too pro profound things to say about it other than, I mean, I think I've just, my life has changed so much since then. Um, it's unrecognizable to be quite honest with you. So I don't have anything else to like add or finish this segment in a way that's not like, what is she talking about? <laughs> I'm in bed. <laughs> it's the next morning, clearly. And when I wake up in the morning, I usually like to do like something for myself that isn't just like logging straight on to work because I do work from home. Um, so um, usually it's like going outside or I usually wear oh, the garbage is here. I'm just going to talk over this. This is not a long segment. <laughs> Anyway, all I'm saying is I like to do something that's not work when I wake up in the morning. I don't usually reach for knitting, but I thought because I'm filming a knitting video, I could do that. So in all transparency, this is not like the first thing I'm doing in the morning most days, but it is kind of relaxing just to get a few rows in. Um, and that's really how you can check weight progress. So here's our status report and I will check in with y'all later when I have some free time. Hello, I'm taking a brain break. Um, just getting some rows in towards the end of my afternoon um it, if you can't tell from what i'm wearing it is like the first hot day of the year here um my well my old computer i just updated my computer and it used to tell me the weather but i think my phone said it was 77 outside i went out at lunch and it was really nice i think it's even getting hotter and i'm having like a visceral memory of being in school towards the end of the school year and the weather is really nice and you just want to be outside I'm feeling that right now except now I have a job and I'm not in algebra 2 so or that feeling of getting to school in the morning and it's cold and then it's hot when you leave for the day, iconic feeling. You you come on to school, heat on. Leave from school, AC on. You know, one of those things. Um, but yeah, I'm just sitting here enjoying my afternoon sparkly water, which is like my ritual. Like after I have lunch, I treat myself. I indulge in <laughs> sparkly. I'm I'm kidding. In a sparkling water. I've been on my LaCroix beat. This flavor, the guava, is not good. And I thought I would enlighten you and open your eyes to the Knits by Mandy top five LaCroix flavors. And these are in no particular order because I can't really pick a favorite. Really all depends on your mood. But the top five are um, tangerine, key lime, we got to shout out our girl Pomplemousse. I feel like Pomplemousse does so much for us. That's three. Peach Pear, she's great. And this may be an unpopular opinion, but I think tied for fifth is Mango and Coconut. Because they're bringing something to the table the other girls are not, you know? So that, that's just, this has been like my pandemic treat is just like guzzling sparkling water in the afternoon. It's quite nice. If I have too much carbonation, though, my tummy gets upset. Anyway, I am kind of realizing I probably bit off more than I could chew in trying to finish this sleeve and block this. Like, I don't think I was, I kind of thought I was going to be able to block this sweater before I left, which I don't think I'll 
be able to do. I might just do it when I'm home because we have a four hour car ride um, and I have passenger privilege. So I might just knit for when it's light out and, and see how far that gets me. Hopefully maybe I'm there for Easter and I don't think it's gonna be too hot. So maybe I could wear it on Easter. Maybe, maybe I can, maybe I cannot, we shall see. But yeah, that's, oh no, this is, did I show you? Let me, sh I showed you this morning. It's, and I haven't gotten that much more done since then. So maybe I can do the gauge flush. I'm rethinking the gauge. Like I was looking at it this morning. So thinking of the other project um, with the fingering white superwash, I'm not having buyer's remorse, but I am having like, why did I buy finger weight yarn? Fingering weight yarn. And I'm wondering if I, instead of like rushing to make it into something, if I should just wait and like hold it double with something and make it a DK weight for something else. Because I don't really know if I want to make a fingering weight anything. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I did make a tank top, a fingering weight tank top last summer and it took me a month so i don't know i don't know about that um but maybe maybe i'm patient maybe i'll just start it and and see where it takes me um so we'll see i am knitting i'm not even showing it to you this is a knitting channel i'm gonna have to edit this video so much this is the problem with doing these like vlogs is that half the time i don't even think i'm saying anything of substance that's fun so anyway this is it I'll, I'll check in with you later this evening hello we're back in bed i'm about to lay my weary head down to sleep but i have an <laughs> exciting update we are almost done i think i have two or three more rounds of increases and then the ribbing and I will be liberated from the anchor sweater. So hopefully I can finish this tomorrow. Maybe I can do the cage swatch by the end of this video. But, you know, that's what happens when I make these lofty goals. The goal posts. They're always moving, honey. I'm always like, well... Everything takes longer than I think it's going to. Which is fine. Um, and I obviously... I, I really don't want to try to rush myself through things. So... If y'all don't see a gauge swatch, I think it'll be okay. So, here we go. So excited. I don't know if this is relatable to anybody else, but anytime I do something that I'm not really sure what I'm doing, Very Pinkness is always there for me. Like, Very Pinkness has saved my life. I like pray and worship at the church at Very Pinkness. That's a little dramatic. Um, but I just love these tutorials. There's the best out there. Okay, so I'm gonna watch her tubular bind off video from 2011 while I do the tubular bind off for this. I did it for the other sleeve, and honestly, I think it looks like garbaggio. I don't like how it looks, but I'm going, to, it's so loud outside. I'm going to try it again and we'll see what it looks like. And I think I won't block this until. Um, I get home to Pittsburgh because it's Wednesday right now and I don't think it's gonna dry in like a day and a half. I think I'll just block it once I get there, but yeah, that's exciting. <music> Okay, I think I can finally end my tubular bind off hate. This might be a subtle difference, but I think to an, a crafter, you can definitely see it. So this just goes to show if you're trying something over and over again, and you're like watching a video and you're like, this looks like crap. Why well, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. Just like find another video. So I was watching one tutorial, which it wasn't a bad tutorial. I It just wasn't clicking for me, right? And this doesn't look bad, but this doesn't look good. This has that, that look that this like curves over, right? 
which is what you want in the tubular. So we did it. We did it. We did it. Hooray. I don't think I'm going to redo this one. Maybe one. Okay, I'm back at my couch and I'm here to round out this video. I know it was a little choppy. This isn't my best work, but I did want to put something out because I don't think I'll have time to film something next week. Um, so let's just go over what I did in these past four days. I started on Monday evening. It's now Thursday. I'm leaving in an hour to go home, which I'm so excited about. So. I did complete a very stout and short gauge swatch, but I think it'll still give me a good idea um, of the La Bien Ami. I, th I don't know. I'm not French. The Merino Singles. I'm, I'm, it's warming up to me. At first I was like, hmm, it's very jewel tone and I don't do a lot of jewel tones, but I think I'll end up really liking it. I think it'll be a beautiful shirt. I'm going to bring this with me when I go home. And I'm also going to bring my bovine tank, if you watched my last podcast episode, um, and finish that. I'm going to, like, make sure I finish it when I'm at home so that way I can stop letting that languish in the pile of shame in my living room. The next thing is I did this off camera. I did go ahead and try to start this blanket, and I got one and a half. Not one and a half. I got this far. And here's my issue. I feel like it lo doesn't look great. I just feel like my tension sucks and crocheting really hurts my fingers. So I, I don't know what I'll end up doing. I might just need to redo this row. I think this row looks bad, but I don't like how there's right and wrong sides every time you turn your work. Is that, that's what's supposed to happen, right? which I also don't get that. I, I don't know. So I'm not a crocheter. Um, we'll see. She looks sad. She looks sad, but I'm leaving this for when I get back because I'm not bringing all that acrylic yarn with me. And that the piece de, de resistance. Ho, ho, ho. She's done. Okay. This is not a good angle, but she's fully done. Um, I haven't blocked her and I didn't block that other sweater. I feel bad. I kind of like bait and switched y'all. You thought you were going to get some juicy, juicy blocking content and I deprived you of that. But I finished this like last night and I just wouldn't have had time to block and have everything dry and want to bring it with me. So I'm just going to do it like tomorrow morning and that way those things will be washed for when I'm there. Not a big deal. So yeah, I actually did end up redoing the tubular bind off on this sleeve. It still looks wonky here, but on this side, it looks nice. So very, very small detail that might continually elude me, but I'm, I'm feeling good that I finally kind of got comfortable with this bind off because it does put a nice finished look and I definitely was doing it incorrectly, which is why it looks like crap. So pro tip, if your work looks like crap, you might be doing it wrong. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever stopped to consider that, but that's some um, sage wise advice from me. Okay. So I think that covers everything. I, I did every little crochet. I did a block swatch. I actually got a lot done. I finished the sleeve. I actually wove in these ends. I just have to cut them. So thank you for following along on this vlog. I really appreciate you being here. You can find me on Instagram at knits by Mandy. Um, you can subscribe and you can click post notifications if you would like to never miss the fiber fun we have on this channel. And I hope to see y'all really soon. Bye.